As far as games of footy go, this one was certainly one of the least stressful for Collingwood fans. A seven-goal opening quarter set up a 71-point victory for the Magpies over the Gold Coast at Etihad Stadium on Saturday night. Welcome to The Agenda. I'm Michael Christian, and joining me, as he does every week, the Herald Sun's Jay Clark. G'day, Jay. Hello, Chris. Oh, great to be here, mate. Hey, this was a commanding performance. It actually, it was 71 points a margin. It felt like 120. And if it wasn't for a bit more straight kicking in that third quarter in particular, really could have hammered Gold Coast. Hey, this is going to be a massive week for the Collingwood Football Club for three reasons. Travis Cloak, maybe last game for the club. Dane Swan, fitting uh, farewell, his retirement possibly. And a game against Hawthorne. Hawthorne doesn't have the invincibility it used to have, Chris O. This is, uh, I think this game is really out for grabs. And if Collingwood win, it would change the complexion of the whole season. They go 6-4 since the bye, knock off the reigning Premier, sets up the whole pre-season. So it's a, it's a massive week for the footy club. Well, let's take a look at the, the graphic that tells us what's happened after the bye. Because before the bye... It was pretty ugly, Jay, 4-8, yep. and eight. but since round 14, 5-4, and four, bearing in mind that of those four losses, they, three of them were against top eight teams, and the Bulldogs were just a narrow three-point uh, losing margin, yep. and the games against Adelaide and North Melbourne were certainly Collingwood in the game. The only disappointing one out of that was probably the Tigers, which yeah. uh, was a disappointing night. But can I tell you, I'll give yep. you a little stat here, you yep. talk about the Mighty Hawks. Mm-hmm. It's been 1,801 days since Collingwood has defeated Hawthorne. That floater, that Luke Ball floater. In Who the prelim final. Forget. It's a little bit, but, but Hawthorne, I think, is a, is a f- average five-goal worse side than they were last year. When you look at their percentage, uh, etc. cetera, they were beaten uh, over in Perth. They've got a, a comeback. Look, they'll be primed because they get the week after before they go for four straight premierships. So they'll be up for the contest. But I just think that... Um, as I said, that invincibility isn't there yeah. anymore. And as you said, the, look, Collingwood Footy Club is probably a pretty uncomfortable place throughout the first half of the season. Really uh, disappointing, injury marked performances, uh, but were well below expectation. I think since the bye, they've totally turned the tables, defending a lot better. Um, there's been some uh, some bright spots in the forward half. We saw Jesse White probably play his best yes, game at we'll the Yes, we'll get career. to that a bit later. Adam Chalor. So, look, I just think that this weekend, is it's not a rolling through the motions game. You know, you get to round 23, I've seen a lot of teams just turn up the toes, which Gold Coast did at the weekend. This is not the case for Collingwood to this weekend. Well, Chris, talking I... about just rolling through and not having to put uh, any pressure on, what about the game on Saturday night? This was... Yep. Well, almost embarrassing in the first half. 68 points was the lead at the long break. Yep. The final margin, as we said, was 71. But the ease with which Collingwood was able to move the ball, what can we actually take out of this game? There were lots of positives, but the opposition was just pathetic. There was no pressure. You see the highlights here. Um, so many times Collingwood just carving through the, the Gold Coast um, midfield, really. Pendlebury gets on the end of it there. There was no defensive pressure coming. So we've got to take it in context. Hawthorne will be a lot more difficult. But Ben Crocker, I thought there were some signs there, really showed uh, some things in the in the forward half, uh, some courage and some finish there. Adam Trelaw, Brody Grundy has been probably one of the form ruckmen of the season, top two or three in the season. Uh, he was very good again. Do you think um, he improved with the braided hair? Do you think that was a positive for The cornrows, him? yeah, it was, wasn't bad. Look, I like his uh, yeah. individual streak, uh, Brody. <laughs> And the back half, look, Nathan Brown played probably his he best did. game of the season. Harry Marsh is very good. Jeremy Howe could finish top five in the best and fairest. So, um, Jonathan Marsh went all right too. Oh, what did I call him? Harry Marsh. Yeah. Sorry, Jonathan. Sorry, Jonathan. Um, so, look, there were a lot of ticks uh, across the board. Um, in there this certainly one. were. And let's talk uh, more specifically about the forward line because Jesse White did stand up. Unfortunately, Darcy Moore was injured in this incident. He just grabbed there. You can see his right hand just grabbed his yep. hamstring right there. And unfortunately for Darcy, that means season over. Mm. But what it does do, it does open the door for Travis Cloak or indeed Mason Cox to come into yep. this team. Now, what about Travis Cloak? Does he come straight back in? Well, I think uh, he's a certainty. he would be shocked if he doesn't play for a couple of reasons. A, I reckon he probably deserves it on the back of nine goals in two games. Look at that tackle there. He's gone back to the VFL and uh, really had a red hot dip. It hasn't been a great season for him, but you commend the way he's gone about it in the VFL, I think. So uh, I reckon he'll deserve his chance. They'll play uh, Cloak and White, which is the two key forward structure, which has really worked over the past month uh, for Collingwood. And he gets a chance to, to showcase himself, to show the hunger for the contest that was probably missing earlier. 
hopefully some uh, some finishing on goal, and it might also be a chance to say goodbye. He's been a premier. So you think this will be his last game for Collingwood? I think so. Yeah, I'd be surprised if it wasn't. Look, it, it just hasn't worked out for him or the Pies really this this partnership this season. But what we can't forget is he's been a mighty player uh, for this footy club, and you know the modern game trades happen. You know, so I think we've been mature about this. Collingwood fans will give him a rousing send off. Hopefully, he'll showcase. Um, his, you know, his skills and his game, and he can present up and leave Mark, and I reckon he'll be elsewhere, and Collingwood can make it a win-win for the footy club. Darcy Moore is, is the sort of the future mm, of the forward indeed. line. And, and one of the what do you players. think? What do you reckon? You've been a, you've been a well, big Travis Clark uh, supporter. Yeah, You're disappointed absolutely. that has got to this. Yeah, I am, actually. I, I, I love the way he plays, and look, he's been dropped three times, so you, you'd have to start thinking there's a message there. So. Yeah. Um, I think he, I agree with you, I think he deserves his place in the team against Hawthorne and just hope he plays really well and we'll see what happens after that. But mm. uh, yeah, it's going to be sad, I reckon, for a lot of Collingwood people. He's been such a part of the furniture. I played with his dad, that's mm -hmm. how old I am. Uh, but yeah, he's been with the other two boys that have played here and it's sort of the end of an era in a sense. I think what does happen if Travis Cloak does go, and I reckon it's looking that way, they need a replacement, Collingwood. So it's going to be a very important trade period for Derek Hine and his team. Mm. Well, Jesse White is one of those players that has played and in a sense kept Travis Cloak out on occasion. White hot, Chris O, say white it. White hot. He has <laughs> been white hot. And you know what, on Saturday night, he flew for marks and... I reckon one of the criticisms of Jesse is that he's got his hands to a lot of balls but hasn't been able to hold on. But there's a great example of getting up high and being able to hold on to some marks. And he did yep. that and kicked three early goals. And you thought, gee, how, how's he going to go here? And then he just, kicking let him down. He missed this opportunity here. This he was right back. on three-quarter yeah. time. And he could have had five or six, Joe. Yeah, yeah. I reckon it's his best game uh, for Collingwood. It was terrific um, in the air, really provided some of this uh, aerial target. Maybe they've been missing at times um, this season. And I think it's really positive for next season. Um, he's un uncontracted as it stands. So he gets another contract? Oh, you'd have to. I mean, on his performance. And the thing is with Jesse, the gap between his best and worst has been enormous mm. across his whole career and Nathan Buckley even said it after the game he's been working really hard or the coaching staff have been decreasing that gap so there's more consistency you know raising that floor and I think on the back of this performance yeah there's some real optimism uh, there and it would be great for his confidence I think he's a, a real confidence player. The other player who's had a good couple of weeks started the season well then dropped off a little is Jordan Degoe who has amassed 35 games in his first two years mm. at Collingwood, still very young yep. and has got an enormous future, predominantly played as a high forward on Saturday night, but kicked three goals, 15 disposals, five marks and really his tackling pressure was a real feature as well and he got on the end, he should have perhaps taken that and kicked another goal, but he's a young player that is the future of the club. It's been a slow burn, I reckon a little bit with Jordan, but he played the bulk of his junior footy career as a star on baller, a hard head over the footy. Now he's playing as his high half forward, which is such a demanding role, Chris, as you know, because you know there's the running patterns and all sorts of work off the ball that goes into it. So he's learning, I reckon, a new side of the game and, and that'll be really good for him because there's a, you know, really on ball stacked, Adams, Trelaw, Greenwood, Pendlebury, you know, he's not just going to barge in there yet. But I think uh, over the first couple of years, he's kicked that goal there. He's learning to play more forward, and uh, he'll get more midfield time. But he hasn't been, you know, a standout youngster of the competition over the season. But he was a high pick, and I think he's a courageous player and a hard player. He's made yeah. of the right stuff. And I think uh, eventually we'll see him in the midfield dominating, hopefully, in the mm. years to come. Well, I'll tell you, speaking of dominating... Yep. The next focus is Jeremy Howe. Ooh. Now, I know he was the subject last week as well, but gee, how outstanding was he? A couple of hangers, including this one over big Peter Wright. Brilliant. And he has been able to move into defence. He looks assured with his hands, and we know that about him, but he's been able to take that bold kick to into the corridor. And look, there's been the odd error, but generally I think the club's encouraging him to do that and it comes off more times than not and he's been a wonderful player. Well, before he came to the footy club, Chris, I thought he was a novelty act in footy. I thought he could take a high mark and that was about it. You know, he comes to Collingwood, wants to play forward and as you said, he shines down back. As you said, he's kicking and he's marking. He's, he's been something that Collingwood has lacked and that is that real offensive, aggressive uh, edge, uh, you know, from a defensive um, point of view, excuse me. So he's been fantastic. He can kiss goodbye his ambitions of playing forward because <laughs> he's been so good down back. And I reckon he's a huge chance for top six and yeah, the best of I, Yeah, I agree. 18, a career-high 18 marks yep. on Saturday night and a career-high... 
29 disposals. Do you think so he's a serious AFL player now? Absolutely. Like he was a bit of a gimmick, I reckon. Well, no, I don't think he was a gimmick, you but I think it's a difficult role. The role he played at Melbourne was yep. ostensibly as a half forward, yep. and it is a difficult role because yep. you're playing that second fiddle in that you can't necessarily go for the marks that you want to go for. Yep. It's a really disciplined type role, but now he's gone back into defence. I think he showed us all how good he is. Just and lastly, right, a half back line for Collingwood. I'm thinking forward to the round 22, uh, the round one team next year, right? So we've got Sharon Berg on one flank, mm. Howe on the other, Ben Reid's and a half back. Looking all right. It gives them some potency yeah, back there. Yeah, no question I about reckon. that. And I'll tell you the other young man that you'd have to have in that back six come round one next season mm. is Josh Smith, who came into the team in the early part of the season and has been able to keep his place. And well, you, on let's Saturday be, night... Let's be honest. And last... Sorry? You, you were unsure early. I was unsure, yeah. I think he butchered the ball a bit early, but I've got to say, I think he now looks so assured with ball in hand. and. Mm. He hits his targets, and look at that handball. Yep. Really slick, and his running ability has come to the fore. He's tackling pressure. He really has developed into a very accomplished player, and I reckon when he's got the ball in his hands, you yeah. feel like he's going to find a target. Yep. Have a look at this kick. Just absolutely yep. lace out. Yep. Now, he has really developed. He is a real fine, and to think he came off the rookie list, and he's not just the only player that's come off the rookie list, Jay, but yep. to be able to pluck a player of this quality off the rookie list yeah. is absolutely sensational for the football club. Good recruiting because I reckon he's a neat player. I reckon even in the NEFL, um Queensland he, he, league, he wouldn't have stood out as much. So it's great recruiting really from Derek Hine. And then, as you said early on, probably some rough edges to his game with his kicking, being well coached, yep. I reckon. Absolutely. So, you know, they've given him the confidence to play, um, to back his kicking, to use the ball, I think 30 possessions at the weekend, play 20 games, average 20 possessions, you know, workhorse down there and off the field, they love him. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll hear a bit here as he spoke with Collingwood Media post-match, a very humble Josh Smith. It's hard to say, we played so well as a team, so um, for me, it was, I didn't think I stood out any more than any other week, I just thought um, the way we played really helped the way I played, I guess, so... Um, I'm just trying to be as consistent as possible and finish off the year as well as I can. So um, I guess I was pretty happy with tonight, but I said to myself, if I could play one game this year, I'd be ecstatic. But um, quickly learned that you get very greedy in this industry and um, I'm very um, fortunate to play um, the games I have. We've um, obviously had a couple of injuries and things haven't gone our way this year, but I'm just trying to take my chances while I can. And um, no, nah, it's been an awesome year for me personally. I guess Dale Tapping is my um, junior care coach at the footy club. So he looks after all the first year boys and. Um, He's done a really good job with us. I think we had four of us playing tonight, and um, he's, he's a really good person, and uh, he's fast-tracked all of our development. And then I guess all the other senior players have been really helpful to me. Um, Chalor has uh, been highly documented, but, um, yeah, he's one of many, and, um, no, nah, it's been really helpful for me. He's so mature, uh, Chris. I reckon he's a potential uh, future member of the leadership group. Yes. I reckon he's, he's one of those ones. Yeah. Very mature. Very mature indeed, as you are, Jay, because it's mm-hmm. time now... For our Monday moments, and, and you're going to kick us off. Yes, well, uh, Mark Robinson in the Herald Sun wrote today that he wasn't sure uh, Adam Trelaw was worth the two first round uh, draft picks that Collingwood paid. Don't forget, Robbo, they got a second <laughs> round pick back. And watch this, mate, because this one is for you. Adam Trelaw will finish top two in Collingwood's best and first. Great of basketball skills oh. and handball from <laughs> Penderbury first. Two, Trelaw keeps running. Look at the Roadrunner wheels. On his right foot. No! Sussy roll! Well done, Adam Chalor. He gives Mark Roberts a little wave in the crowd there at Adelaide Stadium. Let's go back to the handball. Outstanding. Keeps running. Gives the hands. Well done. Blurry. Little blurry. Little look away. Back Chalor um, and a uh, snag. Nice one there. And liked it too. Let's be honest. Now, Adam Chalor's kicking needs a little bit of polish. He's kicked 11 goals, 17 this year, which is a little bit rusty, Chris. Yes. I know. But he has the potential to kick 30 goals in a season, much like uh, Patrick Dangerfield yeah. does. He's I, re- a star. I reckon that's the ceiling. No you question. got my point? Do you reckon I'll give him more? I think you've made your point very strongly. Bullish about this guy. My Monday moment <laughs> concerns a man who so, set that goal up yes. for Adam Trelaw. Oh, now, like we just saw the silky mm-hmm. basketball skills with the football of yes. Scott Pendlebury. Mm-hmm. But one other little string to his bow that we haven't seen a lot of over the years, his ability to kick on his right boot. <laughs> this was my Monday moment. Now, Blair, Blair again involved. But look at this. Two steps, bang, right boot, 45 metres. Nailed it. And a goal. A sausage roll, as you would say. <laughs> okay. So great work from Scotty Pendlebury. Yep. And like it's almost like he goes unnoticed now. He is a superstar of the game, and he just goes around. 
He uses the ball so well. He gets so much of it. He is a genuine star. I reckon he's about, on this year, about the fifth best player in the comp. That's where I reckon, if you're picking him up at like a schoolyard, I reckon you'd have him about number five. So if he is not in the best 22 of the All-Australian team, if he doesn't make that team, Chris, we're going to have a special edition of this show yeah. and we're really going <laughs> to lay into the uh, selectors. So just warn, right. if he's not in it, <laughs> we're coming off a lot. 30 paces we're going to mark out. Final game coming up on Sunday, MCG, yep. Collingwood versus Hawthorne. Just repeat that stat. It's been 1,801 days Too many. since Collingwood have beaten Hawthorne. Will it happen on Sunday, Jay? Uh, I reckon they can get within three goals. Have some more faith, mate. Just say yes. Or anything more than three goals, and I think it would be a disa- yes. disappointing effort. Well, look, you want me to call it as I say it? Just say yes. Before we finish, um, Chris O, Nathan Buckley said something really big this week. Yes. He said... If Collingwood doesn't make finals next year, that he uh, won't be the coach of the club uh, beyond 2017. Thought it was a really uh, strong and bold, bold call. Yes, it was. So I'm going to ask you, Michael Christian, will Collingwood, from everything you've seen, especially in the second half of the season, will they make finals next year? The answer to that is yes. Jay, that's all we've got time for. Have a great week. We'll be back next week to celebrate the big win over the Hawks. Bye for now.